You might have loads of serves, but are you using them effectively? It's all well and good having loads of different service techniques, using lots of variety, but if we're not being smart with how we use them, then we're perhaps not making the most of the serves that we've got. My name's Craig Bryant. I like to focus a lot of my content and videos around service, around skill development, but today we're going to be looking a little bit more at tactics and specifically how to pair serves together, what serves complement each other. So for example, it's very common to see someone do a tomahawk serve and then straight away they go into a backhand serve afterwards. And that's fine if we're searching for little gaps in someone's game, but these serves don't necessarily complement each other. We can't delve into the intricacies of deception and using these little movements to trick people if we're just doing one and then moving into something else. We're going to look at four different pairings throughout this video. If you don't use these pairings, give them a go. Let me know how you get on. Are they effective or didn't you find them effective? Or perhaps you have some different pairings to me. The last pairing is quite tricky. Uh, might not be for everyone but it's a fun one to do. So stick around to the end to see what that pairing is. The first pairing is one that everyone should have, a combination of underspin and no spin. It's a classic, it's a fundamental, it's often one of the first serves that we learn, and it's still very effective at various levels of play too. Now you can use this in one or two ways. We can either use a heavy backspin serve to start with, and really try and get your opponent's bat open really flat to deal with the spin. And then we can tactically try and introduce that no spin serve so that when their bat's open, that you're inducing a high response. And then we have an opportunity to try and put the ball away. And this is what this might look like. So when I'm going for my backspin, I'm very aware that my bat tends to naturally curl upwards. So when I'm going for that no spin, I need to also try and replicate the same. Okay, you can see clearly there, one's come back towards the net, one's carried on. So I'm creating those two different effects and I'm making them look fairly similar. So maybe after I've served five or six heavy serves, and I've really got their bat really open to deal with the backspin, then I would introduce that no spin. And at that point, that could make them start to overthink, make more errors on some of the backspin ones because they're not quite sure anymore. So we're not using the backspin serve right away as a, as a means to win points, but we're trying to set the tactic up as the match goes on. We can also use that in the opposite way, where we might go for no spin serve, and make it fairly obvious that that's what we're doing. Nice open racket, middle of the bat, kind of guiding through. And then we can introduce a little flick of the wrist down. Okay, so that won't spin on the table, but that has held on the floor with the backspin. And if they're not seeing that little flick, and they're thinking that this open angle means that it's going to be no spin, then it's going to induce an error if they're looking to go for this flick and they're treating it as a no spin ball. Okay, so we can use this as one or two ways, and it's good to judge that based on what you're seeing. If you're playing someone there in a little bit more of a pushing player, then we might start with the no spin version and then get them to flick, which is maybe more uncomfortable for them, and then start to introduce the backspin. If they're a bit more of a flicking player, and you've got some heavy backspin that means they have to change to this push, which again is maybe more uncomfortable for them, and then we start to introduce that no spin serve at specific times to try and induce that error. So think about how you can put that serve into your tactical game. Don't forget the simple changes of 
being able to produce that serve into various locations. Someone might be very good at dealing with it on their backhand, but not so comfortable dealing with it on their forehand. It's important that we have the ability to move that serve around too. The second pairing is utilizing the table a little bit more. We're gonna use the two extremes of the table. We're gonna go short down the line or long and fast cross court. So this time my focus is trying to be as accurate as I can. If my serve comes into the middle of the forehand half, my opponent's probably only one step away from dealing with that. And if the ball's here, then maybe I'm only a small step away from dealing with this one. We want to extend that so that one step isn't possible. So if this is my ready position here, if it's off wide here, I'm either going to have to take two steps or maybe one big step to try and deal with it. And if it's short on the line there, then it's probably not an effective return if I'm only using one step. Okay, so by forcing me to make two steps, I start to leave different parts of the table open. So this one's all about accuracy. So I'm trying my best to try and get that ball down the line and keeping it as wide as I possibly can. Now I'm doing that by keeping my bat really flat, trying to make this contact nice and parallel here, getting right underneath the ball to make it short as well. And that means that when I'm going for that long fast one here, I want to be keeping the bat flat for as long as I can before I open up and go for that long serve either into the corner or just off the side. If I open up too early, then perhaps I give them a chance to adjust to that a little bit sooner, and then my serve's not going to be quite as effective. So the later we can leave that, the more effective it will be. And here's one of each. Okay, so they will be different. They are two different serves. They are two different contact points. But certainly in that first part of the serve, I can keep things much more similar. And if I can create a small delay from my opponent, then I have a great opportunity to try and win the point. Pairing number three, we're going to be looking at the hook serve and we're going to be looking at the combination of backspin with topspin. The hook serve is a great technique to try and keep the action similar whilst creating two different spins. And that forces your opponent to make a decision. And if they're not quite sure and they're forced to make a decision, there's more chance that they could make a mistake. So what's important about this one is keeping the technique as similar as we possibly can. And for this one, this angle is really important. So I'm not too neutral here. I want to keep this 45 degree angle. For backspin, I'm focusing a little bit more on contacting the bottom part of my back here and trying to push down and around the outside. And then the similar setup for topspin, trying to keep this bat nice and open, this time focusing a little bit more on the top part of the bat and just pushing around the ball a little bit more. So we've got backspin first and then topspin. Okay, you can see the two different effects on the table. So it's good confirmation for me that I'm creating those two different spins and that's really forcing my opponent to make a decision. And we have to be a little bit careful about this angle. It's quite common when we go for the topspin one that the angle is a little bit too neutral and then it's very difficult to create backspin. So important that we're assessing what we're doing, trying to keep this angle nice and open for both serves, and then it reduces the amount of signals that we're giving to our opponent. 
And the final pairing is the reverse pendulum serve, which I'm going to be doing into the forehand side. I like to do this one into the forehand side because it tends to induce a response more into the middle and into the forehand. And that allows me an opportunity to try and attack a little bit more with my forehand. So I'm going to be going for that underspin serve down the line. And then I'm going to be pairing that with the fake reverse serve, which is going to go a little bit more into the middle. Perhaps if I make a good contact, a little bit more into the wider part of the table. So I'm trying to do a few more of these and then just trying to sneak that fake reverse in every now and again as a bit of a surprise element. This is a tricky one to master, but a fun one to do if you can. And let's take a little look at how it's done. So here I'm focusing on coming right underneath the ball, keeping my back nice and flat, and then that little flick of the wrist just to keep a little bit of backspin on that. And then I'm going to implement the fake reverse. So with this one, I'm trying to keep the same sort of shape as the reverse serve, but it's this little motion here, this little flick of the wrist as my bat is curled up here. It just creates a little bit of topspin, which is why the ball's traveling straighter this way. And once I've made that contact, then my bat is trying to finish in a more of a reverse pendulum style. So here's one of each of those. From my experience of using this one, I tend to use this as a little bit more of a surprise. I find if I overuse the fake reverse, that it's not that tricky for people to deal with. So I tend to use it as a little bit of a surprise element. Perhaps I've been using that for the entire set, maybe two sets, and then I try and pop one of these in just as a bit of a surprise and something that I can take advantage of. So if you want to explore this one, just be a little bit careful of overusing the fake reverse. Okay, so there's four pairings that we looked at. There's a ton more of pairings that you can use. It might be that you use the tomahawk and you pair it with the reverse tomahawk. It might be that you mix up a couple of different spins with your backhand serve. What pairings do you use? Let me know in the comments. Again, just to reiterate, careful not to fall into the trap of just using that ton of variety all of the time. Use that variety if you want to try and find those gaps in someone's game. And then what pairing of serve is going to allow you to take advantage of your opponent's weakness. It's a great way of improving your game without having to do an awful lot. It's just trying to think a little bit more strategically. If you can all do me a favor, make sure you're clicking the like button, make sure you're subscribing, send this to a friend, drop a comment about what you want to see next. All of that activity allows me to continue growing this channel and to keep dedicating time to putting videos out for you all. And to keep supporting me, make sure you're watching one of these two videos. I had to re-record this one. The microphone didn't work again.